Hello and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And today, what we're going to do, I know some of you, as soon as I say this, you're going to click away. It's a lightweight video. The computer will rule the world. Okay, so those of you that stuck around, what we're gonna do is do a lightweight video, but what I'm going to show you, how to make a YouTube intro, you know, a 3D animated YouTube intro, something simple and quick that you could use in your videos, for, you know, for your Amiga stuff. Or you could replace what I'm gonna show you, which is Amiga stuff, with something else, right? I wanna show you how to do it on the world's greatest creative computer ever made, the Amiga, an Amiga 1200 in this case, and we're gonna use Lightwave 3D, and we're gonna do this animated intro that you could then you know, use on YouTube. Now obviously the 1200, uh, you could render on it, and, and in fact, you could render 1280 by 720 on it. Heck, you could even render 1920 by 1080 on it. We're not gonna do that though. As I've always said in all of my videos, use your Amigas for fun, build the scenes initially, have a lot of fun with it, but then when it comes to the, the pixel crunching, the actual rendering of those frames, please, please take it over to emulation. Don't blow up your Amigas trying to render, you know, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000 frames. This is old hardware, even if it's been recapped, restored, you just don't, it's just needlessly beating it up. Take it over to emulation to render those frames. But so yeah, let's get into it. So here we go, we've got this loaded up. And now once again, I am gonna, I'm gonna apologize for filming off screen, but you know, I know it's it's much better to do the whole, uh, you know, capture card thing, but I kind of feel like this is a little more legit where you get to see the actual Amiga screen, okay? I, I try to put the camera far enough back that you don't get that annoying moray pattern on the screen. I know we all hate the moray pattern, it's really annoying. So I'm really hoping the moray isn't too bad and I just like filming off screen because then you get to see everything as I'm doing it. You get to see my hands, oh, the hands. Uh, but more importantly, you, you, it's not, there's no shenanigans, right? I'm on an Amiga 1200. In fact, here we go, watch this. There we go, here's the 1200. Here's the mouse, you know, look at the mouse coming down here on the screen. It's exciting, isn't it? So yeah, so we've got that Amiga 1200 and we're gonna go ahead, get their centered back up there. Lock it down. Now we're back. We've got our 1200, and you know it's a 1200. It does have a Pi Storm 32 light in it. Anyway, now that you know the specs, it is a Pi Storm 32 light backing this 1200. Uh, I wanted to do that because obviously for making videos, having the zippiest thing, and those things are not that expensive, to be honest. You gotta wait for them sometimes, but they're not that expensive. And really, to me, I will still argue this to the day, they don't seem any different than any other accelerator you would have bought for your Amiga back in the old days, like the, the GVPs, or I know this is a TF-1260, which is a modern one, which has a real 060 on it, but I mean, it's the same dang thing. It's a freaking CPU module that plugs into the fast slot of the 1200 and gives it faster CPU and memory. I mean, that's what all these Amiga expansions did back in the day. So I don't have a problem with it. I think it's awesome and it's quick. And it makes uh, doing stuff like this even more fun on the Amiga. Q, why don't you just use a modern PC then? Why are you even bothering with your Amiga? Because there's way, way more other things you have to be restrictive with and optimized with when you're using your Amiga. It's not just render speed. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's image size. There's points and polygon counts in your objects. All kinds of fun stuff. So let's get back to this. So we've got this Amiga 1000 set up here. How did Q, how did, what is this? Where'd you get this? So you can buy this royalty free online. And how I did this was I have a uh, Lightwave 2020 for Windows PC, loaded these objects in, okay? And then Lightwave 2020 Windows PC uh, still supports exporting all the way back to Lightwave version five. Believe it or not, yes, it supports exporting all the way back to Lightwave version five. Thank you, Lightwave Digital. You guys are awesome for supporting that. And by the way, for those of you that think, oh, Lightwave, that program that used to exist. You know what, folks, it's still out there. There's new owners and they're doing some pretty amazing things with it. So keep an eye out for uh, new Lightwave stuff happening. Uh, you might be surprised. But anyway, so glad that this Lightwave exists. So 
long as uh, you know everything meets the specs that the Amiga can handle, we're under the point and polygon count, we're good to go. And yeah, I have some images here, the Amiga check, hold and modify, of course, and the 1080 <laughs> power button here. I did have to go into Photoshop and uh, scale these down to a more Amiga friendly uh, resolutions. Photoshop thankfully has a, an Amiga IFF loader saver. It's actually a hybrid loader saver. It works with um, uh, Maya IFF and Amiga IFF. So you just have to make sure you pick the right one. So we're gonna go ahead and set this camera up here. We're gonna do, let's do 640 by 480. All right, we'll turn off anti-aliasing for now. We're not turning on, we're not gonna turn on any of the fancy stuff. No trace shadows, reflections, refraction. What I wanna show, oh yes, 8-bit ham, of course 8-bit ham. What I want to show you is just some basic animation stuff and tricks you can do to have a fun little uh, intro. So let's go up here to scene and let's set up the frame count. Let's do like, oh, let's see, 250 frames. Now that's that's frames per second. We don't want to do 250 frames per second. We'll be rendering forever. 30 frames per second and go to last frame and we'll do 250 frames, okay? So now we have our animation uh, you know, timeline set up here. We've already set our resolution. We're doing 640 by 480 very uh, friendly uh, VGA type resolution. And let's start really simple here. So we'll go to our, we're on our first frame, frame zero, and we'll go up to camera, we'll move the camera way up here. We'll come over here, we'll give a lot of bank on it here. You probably already know what I'm gonna do, right? Go ahead and keyframe that. We'll go to the very last keyframe, 250. Actually, we're gonna go to, ooh, let's go to like 190-ish, okay? And then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna move all the way back down, and then we're gonna rotate up, straighten her out. And again, I've made numerous videos on Amiga Lightwave. You can check my playlist on my channel on how to do all this lovely stuff. Basically, it's left click to activate, you know, what tool you're using, like rotate or move. If you right click with a tool on the mouse, then you get bank for rotate. You right click with move with the mouse, you get the up and down. So it's really simple. That's one of the fun things about Lightwave on the Amiga and even on the uh, Windows and you know Mac versions is that it's super, super friendly in how the, uh, the, the you know the interface works. It's very intuitive for getting the camera placed and, and set up. So now we've got this nice little like rest point here. Back it out just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and keyframe that. Now watch what's gonna happen. So we're gonna go over here and it's like kind of come down and see how it's kind of going off camera here. It's like, oh, my oh boy. Okay. I mean, you know, that's fine. But let's go ahead and get to a point where right around here, it really starts to get lost. Grab the camera again. Just give it a little, little nudge to kind of help it back into frame. We'll keyframe that. Then we'll go to the last keyframe. And here for the last keyframe, for spline tension, we're going to say one. And this is going to make it just ease in ease in nice and smooth and soft you know it won't be this hard slam it'll just be a nice ease in. you can see how fast that redraws there thanks to the pi uh, pi storm 32 light it draws really fast that's really awesome actually okay so now let's go ahead and make a preview go to make preview go to bounding box and uh you know so here's some things you could preview every single frame and play back at 30 or you could skip every other frame and play back at 15 frames per second. I've covered this in the videos too. Again, this is just to make things go faster. So we're only gonna build a preview for every other frame. So when we play this back, to see it play back at the actual speed it's going to be, you gotta take it from 30 frames a second down to 15 frames a second. So already I can kind of tell from this, it's probably okay. All right, so remember, if we do it 30, it's gonna play way too fast. See, it's coming down, coming down, and kabunk. So what we'll do is we'll back that up, set it to 15. So this is what the speed is actually going to be. And as you can see, that's a little, little more reasonable. Coming down, staying in frame, and clunk clunk, there we go. Landing down nicely. Now Q, so we've come down nicely and clunk clunk. Why do we do that? Well, then what we can do is take the camera and for those last little bit of frames, just do a subtle push in, just something really, really subtle. Nothing crazy, just subtle. Keyframe that there. Go ahead and make a preview again to confirm that that wasn't stupid. Play the preview. Here we come spiraling down, kind of keeping everything in frame. We get to the bottom, come to a rest, and then we do a slow little push in there. There it is. It's kind of subtle and quick, but it's just so that when we land, we're not just sitting there. We kind of give it a little something. Now, you might be like, it seems a little aggressive. Like, we come down. Watch here. We come down. 
come to a complete stop and then push in. Well, how can we make it so it's a little more organic? Well, we'll go to that uh, previous keyframe here. And for spline, instead of uh, tension one, we'll do like 0.7 and we'll do maybe minus point, oops, sorry, minus 0.1. And then for the keyframe here, the 250, we'll go to spline control and actually, uh, yeah, we'll do like 0.2, something really subtle. Let's see what that looks like. Now, I don't need to keep seeing the entire thing over and over again. All I'm concerned with is just this last bit where we land. So um, when I go to make preview, I'm just going to say, you know what, show me like 95 to 250. And in fact, we're going to go back to one to one so I can see every single frame because I really, really want to make sure we dial this animation, this motion in. All right, so now we can hit play. Now we're going to do 30 frames a second because we did actually preview every frame. So now we come down. See that? See how that, instead of just, instead of just coming down and going clunk to a stop and then pushing in, it's really, really subtle. We come down. We don't come to a complete stop. There's not a complete stop of motion. There's just... It comes down, it's really close, and then we ease forward. In fact, you could even lessen that some more if we go back here. And for the spline, this 0.7, we could take this down to 0.6. Okay, so here we go. So now we come down and see, there we go. It's not even, even less of a clunk to the bottom down. And then we ease into the monitor right there. So. That's just you know, the nice subtle little things that spline tension can do in Lightwave. It's it's basically, you're, you're modifying the animation curve, the Bezier curve as they call it, you know, how the keyframe comes to the next keyframe and leaves the keyframe, giving it a nice little softness there, which just looks really, really pleasing. So let's go ahead and save this. Remember, always be saving and always give things versions. We're gonna go ahead and call this version two. So now that's saved. And our camera is set to this. Now I have no idea what the lights are doing or where my light's at. Looks like I have a light here and it is a light, <laughs> a distant light. Our ambient is cranked up. So let's go ahead and turn this down to like seven. And we'll go up here. What, let's see, let's go here and, and just, let's just see what we see. We'll go ahead and press F9. Actually, you know what, let's check the segment memory. Okay, we're good to go there. Press F9. And yes, the Pi Storm 32 Lite, basically almost as fast as WinUE emulator. I love the speeds on this. And as you can see, we have a 1000 here. Looks a little garish, a little bright. Let's get down to the, the floor here and press F9 again. And we'll get into this. This is 640 by 480, no anti-aliasing right now. Oh, the familiar hold and modify logo, we love that. So as we can see here, we're actually kind of uh, missing the bottom of the old keyboard here, huh? And if you look here, you can see, sure enough, yeah, we are Q. Now, this is an artistic choice. Do you want to see the entire system or is this okay? That is up to you. You know, my focus is, you know, my YouTube channel or your YouTube channel. So I want to keep this logo nice and, you know, prominent here. So I'm willing to sacrifice seeing some of that keyboard. So let's go ahead and work on the lighting a little bit here because it is a little... You know, I don't want to say janky, but one of the things I like to avoid, even with uh, these fast, you know, accelerators for the Amiga, whether you have a 68060 or a Pi Storm, uh, you know, try to avoid the ray trace shadows. It, it's tempting, and the reflections they, they they look very pretty, but you can accomplish a lot with shadow map lights. Okay, so we're gonna to go to Spotlight Shadow Map. You can you can accomplish a lot with these suckers, even at 512. The default is fine. We're gonna bump it up to 768. We're gonna go ahead and make it a pretty pretty fuzzy here. And let's go ahead and take the soft angle and align it a little more with the cone angle for now. And let's let's actually, actually you know what? We're gonna bring the cone angle down, make it a little sharper. That's not even a number, Q, very good. Uh, we'll go ahead 15 and then we'll make this around 10. So now it's a really tight, tight cone here. And let's go move this light up. And what we need to do right now is look through the light so we can see what the heck the light's seeing. So we'll do that by pressing the uh, five key, which is the hot key for looking through a light. We'll go here and get it like a nice kind of side kick here. Like, yeah, this is where you want to light. We're going to keyframe it. But remember, you want to keyframe it at frame zero, not 250. 
Otherwise, your light would be animating all over the place, and that would be very, very bizarre and strange. So, press hotkey 6 to go back to the camera view, and let's see what this looks like. Now we might actually have some shadows generated with the shadow map light. Yeah, so here you go. So now you're getting some actual shadowing here. You can see that even in the preview render. So see, there you go. Look at that. We got some shadow renders. Got some shadow, like the keyboard cable isn't just glowing anymore. And I bet if we go back to that, that top view where it looked really garish and bright and just kind of like weirdly blown out. So if we do this, you're probably going to see a nice, more pleasing look. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're giving it like this key light shadow map light. And then we're using like this ambient light to make everything that would be black black let's let's get rid of that so yeah this looks a little better already we're getting some shading in here so one of the things i like to do we'll get down here we'll go back to that light and while looking through the light view go back to light we're going to say first off we're going to turn off ambient actually it's a safety we're going to leave ambient at like two percent okay two percent white just just so that nothing is absolutely a hundred percent black now this light, we're gonna clone it. We're gonna go one, and then we're gonna call this second light Phil, as you've seen before in my videos. Hey Phil, how's it going? And then we're gonna make this one slightly cool. So come over here. Yeah, really just, I don't wanna go crazy. Just slightly cool, slightly cool. All right, that's good. And, uh, not sure what's happening right now. I guess the Mark III is freaking out. So we're gonna say save scene. <laughs> Not sure what that was. That was what you just saw that flashing right there. That was the Indivision Mark III obviously having some issues with what I was doing. Not sure why, but uh, hey, you know what? Upgraded Amigas, right? Start upgrading them. Expect weird stuff to happen. They're not perfect, folks. This isn't... Uh, this isn't, uh, you know, like they're you know, brand new stuff. So obviously it's having some issues or this could be the Pi Storm interfering with what the Innovision Mark III is trying to do. Who knows, right? We're gonna keep working through this. So with Phil selected, we're gonna go ahead and move Phil over here. And we're gonna rotate him over here. Remember, I show you everything on this channel as it happens to me so that you don't have to experience it. So when people are like, man, what's going on? Well, now you know, that's what's going on. <laughs> I, sh I show you all the stuff. I've always done that. I've always shown you the good and the bad. I don't edit my videos out to like make everything seem Amiga perfect, right? That's 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 the whole point of this this channel, to so show you everything. So you saw that weirdness there. Who knows what that was? Pi Storm, Indivision Mark III, I don't know. Go ahead and keyframe that. Now we've got our little blue fill light. Now we don't want this blue fill light to be the same strength as the main key light. So we're gonna turn this down. Okay. And let's go ahead and press F9 and see what we get there. Well, already look at that. So now we've got some side light. You can kind of see some subtle blues and the keyboard getting lit up here. But you know what we still have here? We have an Amiga 1000 in this dark void, which a little, a little, eh, is a little bizarre. Go ahead and save the scene again. And you notice I keep overwriting version two because I haven't really made any major changes. I'm gonna do one more render here just to make sure that we can see what that fill light is doing. Okay, so now, as you can see, like the inner edge here of the 1080 monitor is no longer this like dark, 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 dark color. It's like lit up with that blue fill, nice and subtle. That's good, even the shadow here, this may not read on the uh, off-screen recording I'm doing, but this shadow from the 1080 onto the 1000 chassis here is no longer just like black. It has some of that fill coming into it. Yeah, looking a little more pleasing. Even the little coiled uh, Amiga keyboard down here doesn't have this like black void look going on. But speaking of black void, let's get a table. We need something, like a something to set this Amiga on because right now it's just sitting there and I don't know, it looks a little, a little weird, huh? All right, so we've loaded the infamous checkerboard floor. Oh my goodness, yes we have. We've loaded the checkerboard floor. Let's go ahead and size that up so it encompasses the Amiga. We're going to go to the top view to make sure it really gets all of it in there. We're going to make it really, 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 really big. All right, and then we'll keyframe that at frame zero, not 247. Go back to the camera view, and as you can see here, it's really, really, really big, but it's still not big enough. So we're going to go way, way out there. I want to make this thing 
huge. And why am I making, why am I making it so huge? Because I want to be able to fade it into fog and kind of get it out of the way, like in into the darkness, into the into the void. Or maybe you want to do like a pretty gradient in the background or bouncing bunnies or something. So let's go ahead and press F9 and well, actually, let's check to make sure it is. OK, so you, you can see here it is actually on the ground, the checkerboard. So here's a little trick I want to show you folks. So we've got this checkerboard loaded. OK, and this is the first frame. But we don't know, you know, because I scaled it up, we don't know what or how big the checkerboard texture might be. Now, I can keep pressing F9 and adjusting the size. OK, you know, adjust the size F9, adjust the size F9. But the entire time, what are we doing? We're having to also render all of this Amiga. So what I want to do here is going to go say save scene. Now we're actually going to version this up. And what I'm going to do to make things go faster is go to all my Amiga and clear it out. Just get rid of it because all I want to see is checkerboard ground right now. OK, so now all we have is checkerboard ground in the scene. I'm going to go F9 and you kind of have to keep in your memory, keep in your memory how big that Amiga was compared to the checkerboard floor. Basically, it occupied a spot right about here, right? Well, look how big that checkerboard is now. Ho, ho, ho. That's too big. That doesn't work. And I don't want to have to keep going back and forth, back and forth, rendering, rendering the long render with the Amiga. So you just get rid of the other stuff that you don't care about. OK, so now that we're at point one, press F9. We're not done yet. So yeah, now you've got the Amiga sitting in the screen right about here. That seems reasonable, right? For a checkerboard, seems reasonable. And you can see the lights having their effect. You've got the key light here. You've got the fill light spreading out over here. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, so when we come back down to the ground, let's go back down to the ground here. What's this look like? Yep, sure enough. You can see the effect of the key light and the fill light. We're kind of fading off into the back here, but we can fade even more off into the back. So first, what we're going to do is that checkerboard ground. We're going to go ahead and save that object because you know what? We like the way it looks. Oops, let's give it a different name. Don't want to make that mistake. Let's go to effects. Turn on fog linear fog color. We're going to leave it black. You're like, Q, are you crazy? Yes, I'm crazy. Press F9. What are we going to get? We're going to get black. Why? Because right where it says maximum fog distance, I left it at one. Let's go ahead and type in 100. Press F9. Yeah, we're getting a little better. You can kind of see what's going on. This is because I don't actually know the scale of what I'm doing, right? So let's go to the top view. We're going to go to view zoom factor. We're going to zoom out here. And we know that here's my here's my checkerboard right here, the little checkerboard ground. These little squares you're seeing, these little Tron squares, each of those squares is 20. So here's the camera. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So now we know that this is 220 units. So let's go back to that fog thing. And let's type in, oh, I don't know, not 220. Let's not go all the way. Let's go to like 200. OK and press F9. Now see, we're still getting our Amiga lit. We're still getting our checkerboard, but now it's kind of fading away into the void, into the blackness. Hey, that's kind of cool. Remember that number, 200. Cool. All right. Now let's go back to load and go back and load our Amiga scene up. Now remember, we saved the changes to the checkerboard object, right? So the checkerboard object, we don't have to touch. But we do need to set this fog setting to 200. So once this is loaded up again, we're going to go back and turn that fog on and we're going to set it to 200. OK, so here we are. Linear fog. It's still black. That's good. That's the default. 200. Click Enter. Click Continue. Go ahead and look at the camera view. Press F9. And look at that. We've got our Amiga 1000. And we've got a little checkerboard here that's a little more obvious. And it's quickly kind of fitting off into the black. Now, we are a little close, like the top of the monitor is getting cropped off. And I'm not really quite happy with that. So let it, let's go ahead. Now, we already spent all that time, right, animating the camera to come down. Ugh, don't really want to change that, right? So what's the simpler thing? What's the simpler thing to do? 
grab, grab the Amiga, right? Grab all the Amiga stuff here. So what we want to do is we can move everything individually, which is kind of, you know, one, two, three, all three of these move them individually, or we can go to object and we can say add null. Okay. And then we can go to our Amiga 1080 there and we'll say parent to null. You see that right there. We'll go to the Amiga 1000 parent to null. Then we'll go to the keyboard parent to null. And then we'll go to move. We're going to turn off all the move channels except Z. Okay. For the null. <laughs> Almost screwed that up. And then we're just going to push this back like that. There you go. We'll turn on X even and look at that. We'll move it over. We'll keyframe the null at frame zero. Now, Kia, what's that going to do to the start of your animation though? Now that I've moved that Amiga back. Let's go back up. Yeah, it's a little over here now. So we'll go to the camera. We'll just go ahead and move her over here. Go ahead and keyframe that. Go to the next camera frame. Oh, yep. See, look at that. Go over here, move it up, keyframe it. Next camera frame, well, that should be good, right? Yep, sure is. Let's make a preview, bounding box. We're gonna skip every other frame to make this go nice and fast. So we still get our nice, fun little spiral down, you know, to see the old 1000 with the hold and modify logo or whatever logo that you wanna put on it. It's very important. Whatever logo you want to put on it, not just mine. You can, you can put my logo on your YouTube channel. I'd appreciate it. So 15 frames per second. Here we go. Coming down. Look at all this grandeur. It's amazing. Oh, yes. Boom. Little push in. Yay. Okay. So there we go. We have this set up. And now that we've pushed this Amiga back, let's go ahead and save the scene. We're going to version this up because we did change that animation quite a bit. Let's press F9. And I trust, trust me, we're going to make it look prettier. We're going to turn on the anti-aliasing so it doesn't look all janky and jagged and gross. I just want to do this faster version while we're getting this locked down here. So yeah, now, now, we're, now we're getting somewhere. We can see more stuff. There you go. See, now one of the things you might say is that, well, maybe we were using too much fog, too much black void back there. Keep in mind, you can put other stuff back there. You could do a gradient. You could do something from your channel, you know, back in there. You can, is an image. It's up to you. I'm just trying to, you know, make this kind of moody. It's a little too moody though. Like the back of the 1000 is even going into blackness. Like, geez, that, that's, that's kind of scary. So what we want to do is verify, is that from the fog or is that from the light? So let's turn the fog off and do an F9 again. Okay. So as we can see, I mean, it is the fog, you know, so now you can see back here, by the way, how the checkerboard ground is all exposed and it's kind of clipped, clipped and harsh, which is gross. The previous one looked better, but yeah, the 1000 is brighter, by the way. So what we need to do, but you see the 1000 also still getting dark here. What we're going to do is a couple things here. So we're going to go back to the fog, turn it back on. We're going to push the fog further back out to 30. Let's do but we're also going to say the fog, you don't get to start being fog until later. Okay. So we're going to push that fog way out to like 100. So now Mr. Fog, he can't start doing his fog thing until like normally the fog was going, I start here, I end here. Now we've told the fog, go a little further and don't start until you're like way over here. So leave all this alone and then start your fog thing. That's what we've just done. And as you can see, look, the Amiga is brighter now, like it was in the last render. So now we got the brighter Amiga, but we still have things fading off in the fog. We don't have that weird checkerboard like showing up off in the distance there, but we have a nice bright Amiga, but we are still seeing this little issue here where the back of the 1000 seems to be a little weirdly unlit. That's going to be from the key light. So we'll go to light, which is not called key light, it's called light. Sorry about that. I'm going to confuse you all. And as you can see, why is that? What did we do? We pushed the whole computer back. <laughs> so you see the circle here? This is the circle of where the light's going to affect the Amiga. Well, it's really close to the edge now. So, oopsie, screwed that up. So let's go to the light and then we're gonna just go ahead and move it like this. We're gonna go ahead and move it up a little higher, by the way, pull it down. There we go. We're gonna hit keyframe that at zero and let's go back to fill. Make sure fill, see, let's see, look at fill. Phil is, not look over here, Phil isn't even touching that part of the monitor. Not that we can see it, but we know it's there, so we should fix it, right? So let's come over here with Phil, get Phil straightened up here. Come on, Phil, be a good Phil. 
Get everything in there, Phil. All right. All right, so here we go. Yeah, we're back to like the Amiga 1000 being fully lit. Looks pretty good. Got all the keyboard and everything is all happy. Hold and modify, yay. I know it's low res and chunky and you still can't even read like the Amiga logo or whatever this is here. But let's go to the top of the animation now. This is where we start. Gonna go ahead and press F9. Right, so here we go. We can just barely make out like the corner edge of the 1080 monitor. Ooh, what is it? We don't know what it is. What is this? It's mystery. You're selling mystery, folks. People love mystery. Makes them want to click on the video. Ooh, look at that. So we'll go ahead and we'll scrub forward a couple frames. Press F9 again. And look at this. More of the mystery revealed. That looks like an Amiga 1000. Oh my gosh. Is it? Is it really? And then when we get down even closer here, sure enough, it is an Amiga 1000. It's Holden Modifies Amiga 1000. That's so cool. I love this channel. Yay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get this uh, rendered up with some anti aliasing. We're going to go to enhanced medium. We're going to keep 640 by 480. There we go. Look at that. See, look at that beautiful ham 8, 640 by 480, enhanced medium anti aliasing. Now we can kind of make out that that's an Amiga check mark. And that's the Amiga logo. Amiga logo, look at the power button. It says power on the 1080. Oh, there's even a little bit of a weird rainbow blob down here that's the Amiga check mark. But anyway, hey, 640 by 480, right? Now you could render this higher res, you absolutely could. Again, I don't recommend you doing it on your Amiga. And you could bring those frames into a more modern package to edit them and make it look super pretty. But I would argue against that because if you can't load these frames into your Amiga to compile them, right? Then it's not really being done on the Amiga. It's, you could create this animation and content and render the frames and you know throw it together at 1080 and, and let WinUE chew on it. And then you open up you know Premiere Pro or DaVinci and, and slam it together. You, you can do that, but eh, I mean, you know, you've got Deluxe Video 3 for the Amiga. You've got uh, Magic Lantern. These are programs that take frames that you've rendered and compile them together to make animations that you can actually edit together. But you know what? They're all limited to realistic resolutions and memory that the Amiga could handle back in the day, like D1 and, you know, and PAL. So I, I really like this whole 640 by 480. It's kind of a hybrid resolution. It's like, this is the resolution that uh, you could get away with. You can make a ham eight animation, record it to VHS, you know, playing back at speed, speed using like main actor, which I've covered in previous videos, by the way. <laughs> this video has gone on long enough. I hope I've at least inspired you, right? If you guys who are interested in Amiga 3D rendering, uh, you know, I know uh, Doug's uh, Amiga art contest for 2023 is on, on the horizon here. So for those of you that are inspired, I hope I inspired how you can do some fun, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, 3D using Lightwave 3D and what you can do, I mean, here's a hold modify intro. I could render this out and you can see the spiraling down. And yeah, that's really cool. I don't want to be judgmental like, well, just render it on the WinUE at full 1080 or even 4K. Well, I mean, well, you could just do that in any modern 3D software, right? This is kind of like the limit of what you'd want to do on your Amiga. So, I mean, look, this, even on a Pi Storm 32 Lite, this took two minutes of frame. Right. And then if you're going to try and compile an animation, eh, even with like main actor as your playback device, you, you, those I'm just saying you got to you got to balance it out. So my point was to try and show you how to create a, you know, the, a potential YouTube intro on your Amiga for your Amiga channel or whatever channel you've got. You know how my videos are. Was this helpful? Was there a beginning, a middle and end? Was there a point to this story? I don't know what I do know. I'm done with this video.